Imagine you are the APU generator always stuck at the back. The ground power is your mother-in-law and your wife is the engine generator. You have no choice but to listen to your wife and your mother-in-law. Likewise, the engine generator, the wife, has priority over the APU generator and the ground power, the mother-in-law, also has priority over the APU generator. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. What's up everyone, welcome to A320 Electrical System. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manual so this video is merely a guide. And before we start, do click on the like button, subscribe and press the bell for the latest updates. Okay, let us dive in. Question, how many main generators that the aircraft have? Well, we have two engine generators, one APU generator and one emergency generator. The engine generators are driven through an integrated drive, IDG. There is a generator control unit or GCU for short. This control unit acts like a supervisor or mama hen, which controls the output and protects the electrical system in case of a malfunction. The APU generator is driven directly from the APU. The APU also has its own mama hen or supervisor called the APU electronic control box. Now, let us talk about electrical distribution. The generators produce AC power to the aircraft's AC bus system. Under normal conditions, engine 1 generator supplies AC bus 1 and engine 2 generator supplies AC bus 2. The AC essential bus is normally powered via AC bus 1. Okay, we move on to the transformer rectifier. What is that? Basically, it converts AC power into DC power. And we have two of them. The DC essential bus is normally supplied via DC bus 1. The DC bus also supplies the DC battery bus which charges the batteries. Each battery has a battery charge limiter which monitors battery charging and control. Two main batteries are permanently connected to the two hot buses. Hot buses are not displayed on ECAM electrical page. The APU generator can supply both AC1 and AC2 bus automatically if APU is running on engine shutdown or in case we lose both engines. Now, let us talk about ground supply. Do you know where is the location of the ground connection socket? If you know the answer, then do comment below. When connected, the electrical power will show a veil in green, meaning it is available. There is a mama hen to protect the electrical system by controlling the external power frequency and voltage. Imagine you are the APU generator always stuck at the back. The ground power is your mother-in-law and your wife is the engine generator. You have no choice but to listen to your wife and your mother-in-law. Likewise, the engine generator, the wife, has priority over the APU generator and the ground power, the mother-in-law, also has priority over the APU generator. Normally, you use the ground power for maintenance work, cleaning services, etc. Okay, now let us move on to the emergency generator. The aircraft has an emergency electrical system in case we have a loss on all other generators. A ram air turbine or red extends automatically and powers the blue hydraulic system. The blue hydraulic system drives an emergency electrical generator with limited power. 
the emergency generator supplies the AC essential and DC essential buses. This will provide electrical power to the most essential systems. Do check out my videos on electrical emergency configuration. Allow me to refresh your memory on some of the failures. If any generator fails or is disconnected, then the AC bus is automatically supplied from any other connected generator. If AC bus 1 fails, AC bus 2 can supply the AC essential bus via the AC essential feed push button. Some aircraft do this automatically with the AC essential feed auto switching. If AC bus 2 fails, the system configures to power DC bus 2 via the battery bus. Do check out my video on AC bus fault. The DC essential bus is supplied via the essential transformer rectifier and DC bus 2 is supplied via the DC battery bus automatically after 5 seconds. Let's say you have one transformer rectifier that failed. The DC bus will be supplied by the opposite transformer rectifier through the DC battery bus. If both transformer rectifier fail, then only the DC essential bus is supplying the DC electrical network. Do check out my video on DC failures. Let us look at the overhead panel and look at all the buttons on the electric panel. Battery voltage. Battery charge limiting switches BCL is normally in auto position, lights out. In normal configuration, the batteries are disconnected most of the time except to the hot buses which are connected permanently. When will the batteries come online? Number one, the batteries will connect to the DC battery bus when the APU master switch is on. Number two, when battery voltage falls below 26.5 volts and the battery needs charging if another electrical source is available. Number three, with loss of AC bus one and two and when aircraft's speed is below 100 knots. The BCL will disconnect the batteries from the battery bus automatically when APU has started or when battery charging cycle finishes. An automatic cutoff logic prevents complete discharge of batteries on the ground with no other electrical power source. If we press the battery push button, the batteries are disconnected. The AC essential bus is normally supplied by AC bus 1. If we press the AC essential push button, the AC essential bus is supplied by AC bus 2. We would normally select this if AC bus 1 fails. If a fault light comes on, the AC essential feed push button, it means that the AC essential bus and DC essential bus is not powered, so we need to press the AC essential feed push button switch. If we press this galley push button to off, the main galleys are not supplied and there is no pre-recorded announcements. The fault light comes on when the load on any generator is more than 100%. When I press this bus tie push button, the automatic bus tie function is turned off. When I press this generator 1 push button, the generator is disconnected from the electrical network. If the fault light appears, the GCU has detected a fault or the generator switch is in auto position and the generator is not running. And if I press APU generator push button to off, the APU generator is disconnected from the aircraft's electrical network. The APU fault lights come on and it is the same as generator 1 or generator 2 fault. If the IDG fault light comes on, it means the IDG oil outlet overheats above 180 degrees Celsius or IDG oil pressure is low. An automatic thermal disconnection of the IDG will occur if the temperature reaches 200 degrees Celsius. IDG switches are guarded. 
do not press unless the engine is running or windmilling and do not press for more than 3 seconds as damage will occur. When selected off, the IDG cannot be reconnected with the engines running. Maintenance action will be required. External power connected to the aircraft. When pressed, external power is supplying the aircraft's electrical network. Last question. If a person wants to clean the aircraft but only want to use the galley lights and vacuum cleaner sockets without powering the whole aircraft, what switch needs to be turned on? Well, do comment below if you know the answer and I will see you in the next video.